Hello, folks. I want to introduce you to my friend, Eric Stafford. Eric operates the Kansas City Tour Company. I've known Eric for several years now. We used to sit on the board of the Jackson County Historical Society together. Uh, now, uh, Eric, welcome. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me, Gary. <clears throat> so, I really, now, Eric, I re go ahead. No, I just really respect and appreciate the work that you've been doing for years. I remember uh, that you came and you spoke to a group of people over in uh, Kansas City, Kansas about your uh, Negroes for Hire uh, video when it first came out. And that was, yeah, that was years ago. Oh it yeah. That was like over 10 the, years ago, really. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I have known you since then. But as yeah. long as I remembered. Yeah, Any, anyhow, uh, I remember you started a few years ago, you started doing with bus tours, then, uh, then you went to some walking tours and then you combined that with uh, streetcar tours to uh, kind of keep the price down for everybody and, and everything is so walkable in Kansas City. And and I really appreciate what you've been doing. You, you're building quite a little kind of uh, side business here. I know you'd like to, to build it more and more. And so, folks, if you're in Kansas City, you need to get hold of Eric and you see his contact information there on the uh, 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 screen right now. And are your group, if you've got a group of people, get hold of a group of people and it'll work something out for you and, and, and take a, a real affordable, really interesting tour of Kansas City. I, I have been on the Mafia tour because that's kind of my expertise as a Mafia. And, and uh, uh, he does a good job and, and he'll give you more history about Kansas City than you ever wanted to know. Now, Eric, I, I think, uh, you know, this is Black History Month. Now, I think one of your more popular tours may be the Civil Rights Tour, especially right now. And we have quite a, we had a history that's, that's not as famous as down south, but we certainly uh, had some, uh, some stuff happen in Kansas City in, in regards to the civil rights uh, era in the, in the 60s, and a lot of those locations are still here. So why don't you uh, gonna give people you know, a feel for what, what they're going to see and, and what you're going to tell them on your civil rights tour. Well, our streetcar KC uh, River City Civil Rights Tour is pretty much, I like to call it American history in a nutshell. And when you think about it, Kansas City is a middle-sized city, an average-sized city in the middle of America with a typical American story that everyone can relate to. So on this tour, uh, it starts at 3rd and Grand, and uh, then it proceeds to uh, 12th Street, and then the uh, entrance of the uh, Power and Light District, and it ends at Union Station. Uh, it begins at 3rd third, third and Grand uh, is where you will park at, and then uh, from Third and Grand, um, we walked to the town of Kansas Bridge. And uh, before we walked to the town of Kansas Bridge, I talk about a trail that started at Third and Grand uh, that begins Westport Landing, because that's really where Westport Landing actually was, was down uh, at the bend um, uh, near Third and Grand between Grand and Main Street. And it was a trail, an Indian trail that led to uh, Westport. And so I talk about how the city was established and some of the origins of the names. Uh, why do we call Missouri, Missouri and Kansas, Kansas? We discussed that. We did talk about uh, Louisiana, the territory of Louisiana. Uh, one of the <clears throat> things that I also, so here we are in Westport right here, if you can see the screen at Penn School. And Westport was actually a city before Kansas City was a city. And uh, Penn School was the site of the first African-American uh, school uh, west of the Mississippi River, uh, and it was established uh, right after slavery in 1868 during the era of Reconstruction. Uh, it was established by James Milton Turner. Uh, he was appointed by uh, Ulysses S. Grant to set up schools uh, in Missouri. Okay, so he was one of the first teachers there. Uh, another person by the last name of Copeland uh, was also a teacher there as well, but, and James Dallas Bowser was a teacher there as well. Uh, and Charlie Parker was a student there. Um, that's where he received, received his first saxophone. So it was a school <laughs> up until the middle 1950s. And then the school ended up uh, burning down in the uh, 60s, in the late 60s. <clears throat> and so um, that's the site of Penn School. And there's a plaque that's no longer there. Um, the plaque has been removed, but the plaque was put there uh, by the Charlie Parker's class. Uh, would have been the class of like uh, 1935. Uh, my cousin, Art Saunders, 
uh, was one of the, uh, his name was actually on the plaque there. He was one of the uh, students at Penn School. He was a classmate of Charlie Parker. And my uh, grandfather went to Penn School as well. So <clears throat> we talk about that. Uh, we talk about Westport as well. So it's the beginning of Kansas City. And uh, we also talk about uh, slavery as well. And we talk about uh, segregation along the tour um, and the civil rights movement. And then also what's going on today in, uh, in America and how it all connects. So it basically highlights how history uh, moves in cycles. And so uh, you'll also see the uh, first federal courthouse, the, I mean, the federal courthouse uh, where Thurgood Marshall tried the Swope Park, swimming pool, uh, Swope Park swimming pool desegregation case in 1951. Uh, that's also on the uh, tour as well. So as we go through the slides, I wanted to kind of point out, so it's a, we talk about not just uh, black history, but we also talk about uh, Kansas, I mean, the uh, Kansai Indian tribe and the uh, Missouri Indian tribe and talk about how, uh, why Kansas is called Kansas and Missouri is called Missouri. Uh, so it's uh, more than just civil rights history because uh, it's just basically, it's black history, uh, but it showcases a lot of the civil rights history that took place here in Kansas City. And so we talk about Andrew Jackson as well and talk about the controversy uh, that surrounded his name um, not too long ago when they put on the ballot whether or not to uh, tear down his statue. Uh, and there's a statue in downtown Kansas City, but he also has a statue in Independence, Missouri. They were going to get rid of the statues uh, that had anything to do with uh, Confederacy or racism, and his uh, statue was targeted. Uh, but it's still there now because they voted to maintain it. But uh, we get into that on the tour. Uh, we also talk about Missouri coming to the Union as a slave state, Maine coming in as a free state. So we discussed a, a lot of the Underground Railroad um, on the tour as well. Uh, we go, the first stop in the River Market area is the uh, town of Kansas Bridge. And in the town of Kansas Bridge, we talk about the uh, Quindero Ruins. Uh, we also talk about the uh, West Bottoms as well, and uh, how Missouri came into the Union, how the Civil War uh, actually started here in this area seven years before its official start at Fort Sumter, South Carolina in 1861. It started here with the signing of the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854. And we talk about a lot of the legislation that impacted the lives of African Americans, uh, such as them uh, being, such, such as it being uh, illegal to teach black slave or free how to read. Uh, so that's discussed on the tour. Uh, also, we're at, we add information to the tour as well uh, as I continue to do research. So here recently, I found out about uh, Jeffrey Deronay. And Jeffrey Deronay, he was a slave of Joseph Robodeau who was the uh, founder of St. Joseph, Missouri. And even before Dred Scott, uh, Jeffrey Deronay, he sued for his freedom uh, in 1836. And he was denied because he didn't have enough money to uh, hire adequate representation. And Joseph Robodeau was able to uh, keep the, course, the court case held up, uh, the case held up in the courts. So he was denied uh, his freedom, but he finally obtained it with the help of the Iowa Indian tribe. But what's significant about uh, Jeffrey Deronay is that he's responsible for the Platt Purchase in 1836. And because of the Platt Purchase, that's why the state of Missouri actually extends out here in this red area. Because before, the state of Missouri was just straight up and down. But then when you have the uh, negotiation of the Platt Purchase right here, uh, that's when Missouri began to open up. And that included St. Joseph, Missouri, then was included as part of uh, the state of Missouri. Because before that, it was part of the uh, Iowa Indian tribe. It was a possession of, of, of that Indian tribe. And so and that's where we get the name or the state of Iowa is named after the Iowa Indian tribe. Like most of our states are named after uh, Indian tribe. So the state of Missouri is named after the Missouri is Oto Indian tribe. And the state of Kansas is named after the Kansai Indian tribe. But uh, because of Jeffrey Deronay, who was an uh, interpreter, he could understand, he was a linguist. So he could understand up to five different Indian languages. And because he was an interpreter of Indian languages, he negotiated a treaty for the Platt Purchase and his name is on a number of different treaties. He was actually paid a annual salary by the federal government for his uh, linguistic skills uh, as a slave. And he eventually obtained his freedom. 
but uh, he's buried in St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, he died at the age of 50. So we get into him as well. But uh, we definitely discuss the uh, civil rights movement. And it begins uh, right after slavery. Uh, we have James Milton Turner, who I mentioned here, who started, uh, who's helped establish Penn School uh, in Westport. He also helped establish uh, Lincoln University as well. We talk about the uh, Shiny Indian Mission, uh, where they had the first uh, vote on whether or not Kansas would come into the union as a, uh, what type of, what status Kansas would come into the union as either a, a free state or a slave state. Now, what's interesting, only people from Kansas were supposed to vote on that issue, but Missouri slave owners rushed over in, into Kansas and voted illegally for Kansas to come into the union as a slave state. But it actually came into the union as a free state in 1859. But uh, we get into that as well. So we, we talk about a lot of the beginnings of American history. So we help set the background. So we talk about the Quindaro ruins as well, Parkville, Missouri. Uh, here are actually some pictures of uh, Quindaro, the ruins there uh, as well. So people know Quindaro as a, a street, as a boulevard over in Kansas City, Kansas, but it actually was a city and it was part of the Underground Railroad. And there was actually a university in Quindaro called Western University. And uh, Charles Henry Langston, Langston Hughes' grandfather was an administrator there, okay? And um, so uh, here are, you know, pictures along the uh, actual uh, tour uh, down by the uh, town of Kansas Bridge, which is actually our first stop on the uh, civil rights tour. Uh, here are pictures of the uh, River Market area um, here, uh, this is the actual walk down to the town of Kansas Bridge. And uh, Pearl Wilcox in her book, Jackson County Pioneers, uh, she documents the fact that a, uh, a group of slaves of about 100, a shipment of slaves uh, were sent down uh, to First and Main, and then they boarded uh, a steamship on their way to the Mississippi River uh, so that because they were bought and sold. Um, in the river market area, and they were driven uh, to the to the water uh, to be put on the ship because they were. Uh, but it was the last shipment of slaves that was uh, taken, uh, the, the last major purchase. Uh, that was in 1859, and they were driven down this street down here. Now it didn't look like the bridge that we're looking at today, but it was a pathway uh, that would have been situated here. Uh, but it was 100 slaves that were taken down that way to be put aboard a ship. And so uh, that's actually on the tour. Uh, so the tour, you can book the tour uh, on my website at www.kansascitytourcompany.com. Um, here you have the Hannibal Bridge here. Uh, you also see that on the tour. That's, uh, you can see that from the town of Kansas Bridge. Now on the tour, the tour is about a half mile of walking. Uh, and that takes place at the beginning of the tour. And we go right here to the Hannibal Bridge. Uh, that's our first site. And then uh, we get on the streetcar uh, on 3rd and Delaware. And then we get off at uh, 12th, 12th Street. And there at 12th Street, we talk about the riots uh, that took place uh, after Martin Luther King was assassinated. Uh, we also talk about Estella Carter uh, and that courthouse, that infamous courthouse. <laughs> There's uh, sites on 3rd uh, and Delaware right there at the Pacific House. Um, and so that's uh, the federal courthouse on Ninth and Grand. And that's where Thurgood Marshall tried the uh, Swope Park swimming pool desegregation case uh, in 1951, three years before Brown versus Board of Education. So wow, that's you got you, you got it going on, man. I want to tell folks something about that story you mentioned that, uh, that as you know, I have a special interest in the Estella Carter. Estella right. Carter was a, kind of a, a middle-aged black woman, uh, you know, working woman, went to vote after she got off of work one night, and, and a, uh, it was actually a mob-connected precinct captain wouldn't let her vote, because what they would do is, is they'd vote, a lot of black people would vote the way they thought they ought to vote, and, and so he told her, he said, you know, just go on, you know, we, we took care of this for you. And she right. said, no, I'm going to vote. <laughs> and he said, no, <laughs> no. And he said, here's a couple of bucks. Go buy some beer. Well, right. As I talked to her grandmother later, or granddaughter later on, she said, you know, you think you're going to uh, trade some beer for my grandmother to vote? You, you've got another thing coming. Right. And this brave old woman, she was kind of our own 
Rosa Parks in a way, in a small way, she she refused. She they never would let her vote. But then they ended up after the election, the authorities came to her, they found out about it, and they they filed a charge uh, against this mob guy. And she they printed her name and her address in the newspaper, and she still testified against him, pointed him out in court. And, and he got found guilty and did about two years for a uh, vote fraud. <laughs> and she lived out her life in that same, same address. It, it's a heck of a story. It really and is. And that was, stories like that, that was more snag Klein. Right. 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 And he was he, actually he was really a high level mob guy. Right. Think. And he was actually, and he wasn't Italian. He was Jewish. People right. always, they always say, well, you know, they, they associate the mafia with a certain group of people. No, they were more yeah. than just, now we we all know that they weren't exchanging kids <laughs> back then. No, no, they were not like part of it. They weren't exchanging kids, that's for sure. But but, but there were that, different you know, that, there were different yeah. uh branch di different races of people that had their own mafia. And so right, exactly. a lot of times it gets associated just with one particular group of people. No, you matter can fact, say that. Go ahead. Eric, as a matter of fact, you know, let's why don't you come back and let, let's do another one about the 18th and binary, and you can talk about talk a little more about the 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 what we call the black mafia in a way, and and uh, Felix Payne and, and right. how that intertwined with politics. You want to come back and do that sometime? Yeah, I think I would love to do that. And okay, we'll that, do that. Uh, I get into that on my 18th and Vine tour, uh, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah so, but uh, my civil rights tour, I do that. Uh, Sundays and Thursdays. On Sundays, I do it at uh, two thirty, and on Thursdays, I do it at uh, six o'clock. And so, uh, and it and it ends at uh, Union Station, and uh, and it's a two hour tour, and uh, the streetcar will take you directly right back to your uh, parking at uh, Third and Grand. And so, the tour uh, it starts at Third and Grand, and it uh, the the streetcar will return you back to Third and Grand, and that's where you park uh, on Third and Grand at, at the uh, Steamboat Arabia. And you can go to our website at www.kansascitytourcompany, which is all spelled out, kansascitytourcompany.com, and uh, hit the book now button, and it'll take you to our calendar of tours. And uh, you can pick whatever tour you would like to pick. Uh, streetcar would, uh, and then uh, the Streetcar KC. Uh, River City Civil Rights Tour, uh, you will see that on there. And it's also uh, offered virtually as well. So um, looking forward to seeing everyone there. And All once right, again, cool. uh, thank you, Gary. Always a good uh, time talking to you, getting together. We got to get together for some coffee real soon. And uh, we do. Also another Zoom presentation on uh, yeah. 18th and Vine. And um, We'll do that. Eric, right. I, really, I really appreciate you coming on the show here. And, and I'll get this on my YouTube and, and on our channels and, and folks in the down, look down below, uh, you can hit like and subscribe to the uh, Negroes to Hire channel. And uh, I'll, I'll put links to Eric's uh, tour company down there and, and a little bit more about it, his telephone number. So thanks a lot, folks. All right. Thanks, Eric. Talk to you soon. Thanks again, Gary. Okay. Bye. Bye.